Hey guys, how's it going? Here on the left, we have the Moza Aircross 2, and on the right, we have the DJI Ronin SC2. Both of these gimbals are priced the same and seem to offer similar features. The Moza was released back in September 2019, while the DJI is much more recent at October 2020. Both gimbals have an optional pro package, which includes a follow focus motor, but the DJI does also include an additional Raven Eye module. This module hooks up to the camera's HDMI and streams it over Wi Fi. Both gimbals are very popular and have positive reviews across the board. Since this is a review and not an advertisement, I won't be showing off the cool creative shots that I can do. Instead, we'll take a look at their performance and some of their key differences. Like other products on this channel, I purchased this with my own money so I can get the same experience you would if you were to buy them. Welcome back to Reviews for Life. Here we go. The Aircross 2 comes in a foam box while the DJI comes in a black bag. There's definitely more protection with that box though, since it is bigger. Base models includes everything you need to get started, so there's not much difference here. Overall, design is very similar between the two, with build quality favoring the DJI. It seems like they paid a lot more attention to detail and it really shows. Shaking the gimbal while the axes are locked, we don't see any play at the motors. The Moza, however, has much looser locks, which makes it feel cheap. For the focus wheel, the DJI has it out in front, while the Moza has it out on the side. Personally, I prefer DJI's implementation because it frees up the left hand to help support the gimbal. Now, there's a small quirk about this power button for the Moza, because it can be activated in two ways, either by pushing in the button or by pushing in the focus wheel. This is extremely annoying because I'll be using the focus motor and accidentally turn off the device. This is probably not the intended feature, so mine might just be a lemon, but the one one thing that the Moza has done well is this removable battery. It's actually really clever and allows the battery to be charged separately or in the gimbal. So well done Moza. Both gimbals can be charged while in use and are advertised for 12 hours. Now the DJI does have one trick up its sleeve and that's this folded design. Personally, I don't use it much, but it certainly does make the footprint a lot smaller. Another key difference is the range of motion for these motors. The DJI is mechanically limited while the Moza is able to rotate freely. But in practice, this additional freedom doesn't actually matter because the roll motor is limited to 45 degrees. So what happens when you hit that limit? Well, with lighter cameras, the Moza shakes violently until it's returned within range. And with heavier setups, it'll just reorient itself with the motor in front of the lens. DJI, on the other hand, just simply locks up and recovers when it's back in range. Either way, your footage will be ruined, so there's no real winner here. Practically though, I rarely notice these motor limitations since there's almost always a workaround to getting the shot you want. Setup is the same for both, and balancing takes about a minute. The axes locks are really helpful here, so I'm glad that both gimbals included them. I did find DJI to have better instructions and videos, so I would use those for help. Now, what's interesting is the auto-tuning, and Moses is quite aggressive. My setup weighs in at 1300 grams, but the motor's power is set to 98, 100, and 100 for the tilt, roll, and pan, respectively. If these numbers are an accurate representation of motor strength, then this calls into question the 3 kilogram max load. The same setup on the DJI seems a lot more reasonable at 63, 43, 56. All right, time for some field tests. Both these gimbals perform very well and are very steady. In default mode, the Moses seems better, but once I use super smooth mode on the DJI, they're about the same. Both are significantly better than handheld footage, so no complaints here. Now, both gimbals do come with a lot of cables, but most of them are just extras. Connecting them allows for recording to be done straight from the gimbal, which is super convenient. The downside is that the cables are all straight, so you'll have to make room if your ports are on the right side of the camera. In terms of camera controls, Moza does allow you to set the ISO, shutter speed, and aperture, while DJI only allows for ISO and aperture control. Moving on to object tracking, they work very differently, and DJI is the clear winner here. Moses object tracking requires you to attach a phone to the cold shoe 
and then use the phone's camera as a way to track the object. This doesn't work well in practice because there's an offset between the phone's camera and the camera's camera. So videos will be lower than what's being tracked. But the biggest complaint of this implementation is that you have to be behind the camera to select the object to track, which really defeats the purpose. If you're a solo YouTuber, it's impossible to track and present using this method. DJI's solution is much more practical and uses this Raven Eye module. Instead of relying on the phone's camera, it takes the image feed directly and streams it over Wi-Fi. The target is still selected from the phone, but the final shot will be exactly what you see. In both cases, tracking loses targets when there's sudden direction changes and occlusions. Just an FYI, I'm using the November 2020 firmware for DJI and 1.006 for Moza, so these features might change down the line. Now, a lot of cameras come with Wi-Fi these days, along with some proprietary app. You might be wondering how it compares to the Raven Eye. Well, functionally, they do the same thing minus the object tracking. One thing I did notice about the Raven Eye is that it has a much more steady connection because it can use the five gigahertz band as well as the 2.4. The final feature to look at is the Bluetooth support and both systems connect quickly and the app opens up a bunch of extra features. Layouts are slightly different, but functionally they're the same. They both offer time-lapse, gimbal controls, and camera controls. Now, just for fun, let's test out these max limits. I put some counterweights on both of them, and here they are. Each setup weighs in about 2.8 kilograms, so not quite the max load, but close enough. Testing out the pan motors, we see that the DJI slowly accelerates, overshoots, and then returns to the correct position. The Moza does exactly the same thing, so now the gimbal can properly handle the increased load. With my setup, I'll probably never reach this weight, but it's fun to see how they behave. With a more typical load of 1.2 kilograms, we see that there's none of that overshoot business, and both gimbals respond pretty quickly. Between the two, it does feel like the DJI responds a little faster, but just barely. So is there a clear winner here? Well, sort of. If you only wanted to get steady shots, then the base model for either will perform to your expectations. But if you plan on traveling with it, I would favor the DJI because of its foldable design. For those with heavier setups that approach the three kilogram limit, neither solution is really great since they both suffer from overshoot. If I had to choose though, probably the DJI because of its focus wheel placement. And finally, if you plan on using object tracking, the only option here is the DJI, since Moza's solution is absolutely crippled. All right, that's it from me. If you've enjoyed this content, consider hitting like and subscribe. Thanks for watching and stay classy.